Hi everyone, this is just a uh, basic video tutorial uh, carrying on from the installation of Freenas 8 discussing how to configure the basic functionality of Freenas 8 to allow you to reconfigure sort of your network information, your IP address, host name, uh, fully qualified domain name, things like that. Basic things really. So your uh, an administrator password as well, things like that. So basically here we have our console window of our Freenas instance that's installed on our server our physical server or our virtual server, in this case it's installed on our virtual server um, just a test test environment basically um, we have the various options which can be seen here option one to configure our networking interfaces which we'll be doing in a second option two configure the link aggregation basically allows you to configure multiple ethernet uh, interfaces, networking interfaces to bond them together for load balancing or sort of basically increased bandwidth, things like that. Quite useful for iSCSI, um, various other things if you wanted increased bandwidth, so that kind of thing really. Option 3 allows you to create a VLAN interface if your network has VLANs. Option 4 is to configure your default route. Option 5 configure static routes. Option 6 configuring your DNS, so your domain name service, things like that. Primary domain server, secondary domain name server, things like that. Option seven, you shell access, so you know you can run sort of all sorts of shell commands from the from the console window here. Eight, pretty self-explanatory, is to reboot. Nine, again, self-explanatory, is to shut down. Now, when you turn your free NAS box on, it will be issued with an IP address, providing you have a DHCP server on your network. In our case, it's gone ahead and dished out an IP address. We are going to want to change that. Um, and set a static IP address because we don't want to use the dynamic one that was assigned by DHCP. This probably will be the, the same for you. you. You'll probably want to set a static IP address. Uh, your network might be dishing out IP addresses that are different from the ones you're actually using. I know certainly in the case where, where I work, our, um, our DHCP network is actually uh, dishes out IP addresses that are obviously different to the ones that our devices are configured on uh, purely for security reasons, things like that. So we're going to go in, select option one configure networking interfaces here we have to select our network interface so in this case it's BM0 the default interface so we select option one you can have obviously multiple interfaces if you have more than one network interface assigned or more than one physical network adapter if it's on a physical server not on a virtual environment so we select option one delete the existing config in this instance I'm just going to click no um, configure the interface for DHCP no because it's already done that uh, configure IPv4. Yes, that's exactly what we want to do. Click that. Interface name. It's currently retained the information I previously set before, but you go ahead and name the interface. I'll just name it LAN interface. Um, here you set the IP address that you want. So in this case, 192.168.254.104. And then you need to set the subnet mask, um, long subnet mask, or the short form. Um, just going to go for the short form freeze. Click in there. Slash 24, which is obviously a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. Hit return. Configure IPv6. In this case, no, I'm not using IPv6, so I'm going to click no. Give that a minute, and there we go. Now, the static IP address you've just configured shows up here. So if we now flick over to our window, our internet browser, in this case, I'm using uh, Firefox. Find it to be quite nice on Windows 7. So the default username for FreeNAS is admin. Password Freenas. Never remember site. Oh, it's probably because I had a stale session there. Let's try again. Just doing its thing. Here we are met with basic networking information about our server. You have all your various tabs down the side here and along the top. So we have the account tab for configuring the user accounts and uh, users and groups. Uh, the system tab for basically your settings, system information reports, things like that. Networking information, so global configurations, your interfaces, uh, VLANs, things like that. Things things you could do from the console window basically. Storage, uh, configure your volumes from here. This is quite important where you add your hard disks and uh, configure software RAID. Sharing, different sharing protocols, Windows shares, Unix based shares, Linux shares, Apple shares. Um, various services as well um, for turning the services on and off for the ones that you're going to be using and for sort of configuring Active Directory very handy uh, Windows file sharing as well things like that um, and obviously your reboot and shutdown 
on this occasion we're going to go straight into the system we're going to go into our system settings and configure things from here now basically you can configure your protocol from here for the web interface it's by default set to HTTP you can set this to HTTPS certificates things like that set your default language in this case it's English time zone I've set this already very old London uh, NTP time servers various ones these, these are just the default entries here when you've made your changes hit OK and you get a little box up here confirming that it's been updated now gonna flick over to the uh, da, 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 networking configuration could actually do it from up here where I can configure my host name so in this instance as an example NASA one and the domain name so example.co.uk whatever your domain name is enter your default gateway here in IP, your IP address I uh, don't need to enter the subnet mask so just the IP address of your gateway and your various name servers here by pv6 if you have one from here you can configure interfaces um, DHCP says false because we haven't configured this interface via DHCP and it also says IPv6 is false as well because that hasn't been auto configured either again link aggregation here for your uh, various interfaces you can configure the various protocols for your interfaces here for multiple networking cards um, multiple Ethernet Ethernet uh, connections um, static routes VLANs here for your VLANs and basic network summary here um, one final thing sort of before I end this video a very basic tutorial is where you set the admin user information here the admin user's email address and uh, to change the admin user password I would advise you do that straight away because the default password is obviously free NAS and it pretty easy so if you don't change it it's pretty unsecure um, I'd also advise uh, flicking the HTTPS service on for Freenas um, so that the data is encrypted uh, when you're sending it over the network if you're on your internal network you know might not be so bad to just leave it as HTTP but certainly if you want to make it then accessible over the internet the web interface it will be very handy to have it as HTTPS so that your passwords and things like that are encrypted Okay, that's a basic tutorial on how to set up the network and basic settings for FreeNAS 8. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, we'll also be putting out various tutorials for the more complex functionality of FreeNAS. Also be putting together some tutorials for OpenFiler um, to do iSCSI with that for those of you that are interested in using OpenFiler. OpenFiler is quite nice as well. Um, we're actually using that where we work too. It's a very, very nice system. We're having positive results with it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, stay tuned for more. Thank you.